Yeah, the another feature that we are going to see is sharing via Apex. So uh, we have seen like criteria based sharing rules. We have seen role based sharing rules. All these things we have seen when we were doing configuration, right? If you remember, we had created in the admin and Apex uh, tutorial, uh, you would have seen that, you know, we had created organization wide defaults, private, public, uh, private, public, read, right? Public, read only. And then the sharing is done if it is private, right? If the lead is private or case is private and you have a role hierarchy, the people, peers cannot see the record. So you can share it using criteria based rule. Now we can also do the sharing via Apex. So each app, see basically what happens is each, ob each object has got an object share entity, basically an S object within it, okay, which is used for sharing. So whenever you do a sharing, basically a record gets entered into the contact, sh into the share object share object. So let's look here. So this contact share is the one which stores all the contacts uh, sharing rules, okay. Who can see what? So now basically how do you share it at runtime using Apex? So you say list contact share shares to create uh, so this is a contact share object so all the new records which are coming and you know you're saying you you created a flag called true okay so any new record which is coming in you created a flag called true and uh, basically you're writing a trigger here and uh, you're saying contact share you're creating a new contact share you're saying the access level is edit and the contact id of the share record what you have to want is the current records contact id so that gets and what are the use that get allocated to the contact ID and what are the user or group ID whom do you want to share it so with the group ID now this group ID you have to get it from the group okay there is a group as object for user ID so you can uh, transfer it to that okay and then shares to create dot add we are basically creating a shares to create we are adding it and then we are inserting so what we can do here is so basically what is happening at runtime, you are going to go and do the sharing over here. So please understand each object has got a share object within it. Within the sharing rule, now what you are doing is every new record which is coming in, it is getting shared based on a, if, if it is, it's got a flag called as make public, see it's a custom field of course. What you are doing is you are creating a new contact share and you are giving the access level, edit, read only, read write, what is the access and what is the object a record that needs to be shared. And what is with whom you want to share with a user or group? So you have to query this group ID from groups. This line is not there in this code. We'll see that, okay? And then you add it to the list and you're creating it. So that is sharing rules. And you can also check access uh, at runtime. Who has got the access? So there is one table called as user record access. So if you use user record access, you will see like you know uh, select record ID. This is the fields has rec has read access, transfer access, max access, where user ID is equal to any particular user ID at runtime. Like say you want to check it at runtime in a trigger whether that person has got access. As I told you in lightning components you don't have the sharing enabled by default. So you may have to use this in your controllers at time for the lightning aura controllers. And the record ID is the current ID. So these are the properties you know you can check. So basically you can do a runtime sharing and you can also check whether a record a person has got record access using read access uh, using this user record access metadata table okay so at runtime in your apex now if you want to check it explicitly whether that person has got access or no you can use this query and based on this query result you can uh, continue with the processing or send a error message to the front end so we'll have to check this uh, we'll try to run this and some other classes that we will cover are also like say you can use user info user info gives you a lot of important uh, methods like say for let's take a look here if you go to developer console say user info dot so this is you can get the id of the profile id of the user couple of methods you can do at runtime so pretty useful class by salesforce current user id all these things you can get okay what is the user's role a lot of things can be accessed from here similarly another is get these are the important ones which you can use to manipulate from user info now if you want to also get the schema details there is something called a schema class which is useful you can get the details of an object field properties all the information about the object metadata like you know if the field is readable 
you can go up to the field here, but you cannot create fields huh? you cannot create fields in this but you can go up to querying what is the field name what is the field property type whether it is a data type all those you can find out and the save point and rollback we have seen this is the database class which we have already seen and database.query is again we have seen passing now if you want to add the rate uh, now if you want to run any code apex class asynchronously you have to give the annotation at the rate future call out equal to true so now if you're doing an HTTP callout, like say, let me explain here. Now in this, suppose you have a class, we saw in integration that you could do an HTTP callout to an external system, right? Now that might take time to come back. So now if you don't want the processing to stop in Salesforce and you want to wait for that particular, you want to wait, uh, you don't mind waiting for the re response from that HTTP class, whereas you do the other processing in Salesforce, then you can say at the rate future callout equal to true. So callout equal to true means that class can come do callouts. At the rate future means it can run asynchronously. That it will be running asynchronously. That is, if the code is executing, it it will run that method and will not wait for it to come back. It will go to the next lines in your Apex code. While that will happen parallelly in a separate thread. And if you add at the rate future callout equal to true, your future method can do an HTTP callout also. So for that HTTP callout, you can refer to the integration tutorial. Uh, at the rate future, basically annotation will make a class run in async mode. Otherwise, it will run in synchronous. It, till the time it completes the HTTP callout and comes, you'll have to wait for it. But if you want to make it asynchronous, you can put it as at the rate future. So now, if you want to get some, uh, if you want to look at the schema class, as an important class to get S object details. Now, if you say schema.getGlobalDescribe, it will give you a S object map okay so you can further drill down it will give you a map of string and object type you can loop through the schema map now you know how to loop through so you can say string x schema map dot key set so it will give you all the object names so these are the basic object names if you say schema dot get global describe it will give you all the object names actually the schema map key which is an object to another method which will be like you know suppose if you further pass this what you get here schema map dot get name of the object and get describe fields dot get map you can go through the field level you can now have do loop through the field map okay and then you can get a the further drilling down once you get the object it is a bit uh, the syntax is a bit uh, complicated but the concept is the same at the top is a schema schema dot get global describe will return the objects from the objects get global describe it creates a map of string and object types okay now when you loop through the schema map you can loop through this as object types dot key set and for each and every object what you can do is you can do a schema map that get object dot get describe if you pass the name of account dot get map you will get a map of fields okay so and each field now you can go through the field map and get the field details So now here what happens here is you know you can uh, say like you know you can create a map as I told you a field map and within the field map now if you go to detail fields dot get map it will give you another field property map within that it you can go through the field map values and you know it returns it further down you have to drill it down further and then you'll get the object field name the object field API name you can get the uh, label all this you can uh, get through but you'll have to basically drill down on the field map okay so the schema class now if you want to go at runtime and you want to check some data what is the field name whether it is readable or no you can use this schema class okay we will see the example for this but please remember that schema is one of the advanced apex uh, features salesforce gives you okay you can drill down but you cannot create you cannot do ddl statement you cannot create fields please remember that but you can read the properties of the fields and you cannot change that also you cannot create fields you cannot change the properties you can read the properties of the field like it is pick list if it is a, what is the api name you cannot change it okay so that's what schema class does for you couple of other classes advanced classes in apex are json class which helps you to serialize and deserialize uh, javascript objects okay you can serialize an object and send it across to another uh, if you want if you have a json string you can make it into a json object and send it to another uh, HTTP callout or something. Now we were talking about limits. Now we have a limits class also at runtime. Now suppose you have a query or some place you want to check. You can use a limit class to check whether you're going to hit the 
DML limits or no? Okay. So these are the other classes that we have. So now let us take a look at some of this Apex sharing here. So let's create an Apex sharing. First of all, what we will do is let's create an sharing rule for cases. First, let's check our uh, role hierarchy. First, if you remember, we had to check the role hierarchy and see who are the parallel users. So let's go ahead and do that first. That's fine. COO and COO or parallel. What I'm doing is I'm checking the rule. I'm going to do the Apex Big Sharing Rule uh, demo here. We will see and understand how it is used. Okay, so both the users are assigned over here. So what we will do here is let's check the cases. Let's make cases private. Uh, let's check the sharing setting on cases. Let's check the sharing setting on cases. Our lead is already private, so that's great. And let's check if there are any sharing rules. We want to disable the sharing rules because we don't want that to work now. Right. So it will be deleted. We'll have to delete the lead sharing rule, otherwise, it will get shared. So let's delete the lead sharing rule. So meanwhile, if I go to my lead, all right. So now, if I create a new lead uh, as this user, the other user should not be able to see. The other user should not be able to see it. So Apex lead one. Created Apex lead one. Let's import. Uh, let's add the important fields. Let's save it. Okay. So we created an Apex le uh, lead, uh, and now let's log in as the other user and see whether we can see that user. So here what we'll do is we will do some, uh, I, I will use the anonymous block, we will not create a trigger, I will explicitly share it. Later on you can use that example to write triggers if you want, but right now that's not required. So here what we will do is we will actually uh, share the record from anonymous block. So first let me let me log in as the other user and check what's happening here. I should not be able to see the lead. I should not be able to see the lead here. So if I go to my leads. And if this is new, today's leads, it will not show me the lead. So yeah, I don't see the lead here unless it is explicitly uh, explicitly shared with me. So let me log out and go as the first person, which is admin. And now using anonymous block, we will do the sharing. So we logged in as the admin. So what is happening now is our lead is private. We are not shared currently. One lead created by the myself as an assistant system admin the second user we will see what access we'll give it explicit access so so for this what we have to use it we have to use the case share object so case share the name is case share cs equal to new case share and cs dot case id equal to let's explicitly add the case Let's pick up the case from, sorry, I think it was lead share. I'm sorry. It was a lead share. So let's explicitly share this. So I'm going to share this lead. Okay. First, we'll create a lead share and say, that's fine. So it's going to show me the fields, okay, which are available here. Lead ID, it should be a lead record. So let me take this.
and lead access level is edit. And see is user or group ID I'm gonna give the second user's record ID uh, uh, user ID okay insert CS So now what's happening is basically I'm tracking the lead ID that I want to share which is with the record that I was created lead access level I'm going to give edit user or group ID I'm going to give the second users so I have to go to the user that is already here let's go to the second user Correctly, so let me query for the ID very quickly. Select ID from user and enter. What is this? Would it be username equal to yes? The second user's username. That's an array of empty one. I'm just picking the ID of the user because I have to explicitly share pass this value here. Execute this. Okay, I got this value here. So I'm going to uh, share it with this fellow. Let's execute this. It's gone through. So now let me log in as a second user now. And see that lead. So now if I go to leads. Now the lead got shared with me okay because what I have done is I have explicitly shared it via the Apex share look at here this code here let's look again here I have explicitly passed the ID you can query for the ID or you can go to trigger.new and then I have given the edit access level what is the access level this is typically the edit read only other ones which you have and the user or group ID for which which user I want to share with the second user then I said insert CS means now the lead share has got inserted. So that's why now the second user is able to see this. Okay. So this was about sharing.